people qualify for the 350 Social Relief of Distress or the SRD grant after the means test threshold was increased from 350 rand to 624 rand? Social Development Minister Lindy Wezulu this week gazetted the new regulations to increase the income threshold to 624 rand, which is the food poverty line set by Stats SA in September 2021. So uh, for a more explanation, clarity on this, we joined by Social Development Minister Lindiwe Zulu. Minister, good morning. Thanks for speaking to us. Good morning, Sakina, and good morning to your viewers. Good to see you again. Well, I see you all the time, every day <laughs> in the news. <laughs> I'm glad yes, we have a very good morning to you. I'm, I'm glad we have opportunity to speak because, you know, uh, along with uh, questions around UIF, I think the social uh, relief of distress grant is the one we get the most queries on. So thanks so much for affording us the time, Minister. But perhaps in starting off the conversation, uh, just in layman's terms, Minister, what exactly are the changes that have been made to that work as it? Um, the, the changes had to be done uh, just in simple terms. Remember that we had um, the regulations under COVID-19, this is how government operates, uh, you know, all the time when we have to do something new, you got to publish the regulations, you got to open up for people to comment whether they think that what you are publishing is going to be of service uh, to the people or not. So because we ended the, 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 the national uh, disaster under COVID-19, we now have to use the normal regulations, which therefore meant Again, we have to go back and publish the regulations so that when the money is being paid, it is covered by the new regulations. Now, the threshold, when we, we opened up for applications, we realized that we're having less people who were being approved. And the reasons why it was because of the threshold and therefore the regulations are a reference to lifting the, the, the amount in terms of the threshold so that those that qualify, we get as many who qualify as they qualified in the past because it became a bit of a problem that you had in the past have something like 15 million people applying. Of course, it goes down when you then um, uh, do your processes. And then you find that with the new uh, regulations, you almost have only about... 5 million people, in fact, in some instances, some months, even less than that. Then we realized that this had everything to do with the threshold because then we need people need to be approved and the approval depended on that threshold, how much it was. So we needed to lift it up so that people can be able to be approved. That's uh, what happens in simple terms. It's much more complicated than that. Sometimes it gets to be complicated for me too, but I don't have a choice. I need to understand and appreciate it. And, and Minister, speaking of that, you know, um, a lot of frustration is expressed around the processes, the amendments, and people asking uh, why are there so many changes to the criteria? And some still smarting over the fact that they were uh, obviously uh, during the first rounds when uh, the SRD grant was first introduced, they did qualify and now they don't for one reason or another. So perhaps, uh, you know, just to uh, speak to people to make them understand why it is necessary uh, to actually undergo all of these changes? Well, firstly, I've already explained in terms of the regulations, which we are done with now, and we're not going to have any problems around that at all. The second issue is that to explain that those who apply at the right time when they applied and they were approved, they will have to be paid and backdated um, to that time. But still, we have to look at the ones who were rejected because they were rejected on the basis, of, again, of the old regulations and, again, the threshold. Even those ones, we have to go back and approve them and then backdate them because we were given a budget of $44 billion, uh, for this. And, again, it's lessons from the previous. We were calculating the numbers on the basis of the previous grants uh, that we were paying people will be paid um, their money. And I know, Sakina, it's, it's painful for people who don't have the money. But unfortunately for us, we also have to be accountable uh, to the Auditor General. We also have to be accountable to Treasury in making sure that it's the right people. The second issue, Sakina, is that 
Many people also went back to work. And those that went back to work, now we can see in their accounts that they now have um, an income that is coming through. As, uh, again, we did in the past, we have to make sure that we go to SARS, we go to all other grants that are being paid and make sure that the people who are there are not the ones that we are now going to be paying the 350 because they are getting something from the state. Our systems are, it's all systems go now. Unfortunately, it took us this long. One other reason why it took us long, Sakina, is because we needed also to renegotiate with the banks because when we pay grants and we pay the 350 we pay the people who pay so we pay the banks and with the banks we also need to negotiate how much should we pay per person because sometimes the amounts that the banks are also wanting us to pay are quite high but fortunately in our negotiations there is an appreciation and an understanding that the reason why we need to negotiate, we don't want people to pay for being paid. Let the government pay so that when it is 350 for them, it's straight that 350. They mustn't go to the bank and be told that they are paying bank charges. We have to pay the bank charges. And so all those negotiations, unfortunately for us, take forever. So, Minister, uh, the banks and then, of course, there was the South African Post Office uh, who have now reportedly pulled out from the SRD grant distributions. Uh, can you just give us clarity on that? Because uh, surely, you know, for most people, this must be very frustrating uh, for recipients to no longer have that avenue available to them. Yes, the issue of the post office is a long, painful and odious one in as far as I'm concerned. And the issue is that there were agreements that were made uh, between social uh, development, post office, and now post bank that's being brought onto the table. It's very unfortunate that a, a, a government institution that has such a reach is having the kind of problems that they are having. We are in negotiations with them. We have been in meetings because they also need to be paid. But at the same time, the post office, their role was not necessarily that of paying the social grants, but it was felt that because they've got such a wide reach, maybe they need to be used. There is some discussion going on between the post bank, the post office and the post bank. We are hoping that those negotiations that the post bank should be the ones that take over because they, 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 they have the capacity. We are hoping that in a maybe in a few weeks' time or so, they will resolve the problem. The other difficulty with the post office is the fact that they are closing many of the, of the post offices, which were easy access to our people. But when all is said and done, I am of the view that uh, the department, uh, SASA and ourselves, the ministry, need to look for better solutions for our people so that money is easily accessible. There is technology today. There are means of paying this money through the, the, their phones, getting the money from the bank. Fortunately, many of the recipients are able to get the money from ATMs. They are also able to get the, their money from uh, uh, commercial places like uh, pick and pay and checkers and all that. So we think that uh, in the future, we're looking at solutions that are easy for people to access the money. And with today's technology, it's clear that we can be able to do that. The fact that we're able to get so many people to apply using technology and not going to any SASA office is already proof that our people have the capacity to understand what they need to do in order for them to access that, this money much, much easier, including being able to access this money maybe even in the um, spaza shops closer to them where the spaza shops can do that, or they can even procure and purchase from the spaza shops. We're looking for those kind of solutions, and I, I, I think that uh, we're going to get there. Thank mm. you. And, 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 you know, Minister, um, just to uh, take this further, because uh, the amount, uh, the threshold raised to 624 um, is, of course, uh, in line with the poverty line set by Stats SA in September 2021. And we know the inflationary pressures that have since uh, come to bear. So 
things are essentially worse. Uh, the food basket, uh, food inflation has skyrocketed uh, since September 2021. So while it is, of course, a great initiative, again, we are slightly behind the curve, if you will, if you look at how inflation has literally outstripped uh, how things have developed, the pace at which they've developed. So just your thoughts on that, Minister. Yes, um, uh, I've, I've repeatedly said, and I think the Department of Social Development being the one that is responsible for seeing to the well-being of our people that 350 is very little money. But of course, we must recall why we ended up with the uh, 350, and this was the cause uh, because of COVID. And I'm sure that under normal circumstances, had we knocked on the doors um, to get this money uh, to give to the people who are unemployed and, and so forth, it might have been much more difficult under normal circumstances. So while COVID-19 was a pain, but at the same time it gave us as a department to be able to get this money from Treasury and distribute um, this amount of money uh, to the unemployed. But we're moving to the next level. Remember that we spoke, Sakina, quite a while back when I was saying that I asked the question, 350 now, then what after that when uh, COVID-19 ends, if it ends and it hasn't ended, uh, by the way, we then pulled out the discussion about the basic income grant. Mm. We are still in the discussion around that. In fact, in the coming week, we've got um, specialists from uh, Germany who are also paying the basic income grant to their own people in Germany, those who are unemployed. We're sharing ideas with them. We're looking at how other countries do it. Right now, it's no longer about whether basic income grant is necessary or not, because if it comes, it will be above this uh, 350 that we are talking about. And the issue of poverty line is critical for us because we need to be able to support our people in such a way that they are then able to get nutritious food, they are then able to buy the basics uh, for their homes. The discussion about the basic income grant now is about how are we going to implement it, what formula is it going to be. We are hoping that this 350 was a stepping stone, even though it came in the manner in which it came. And so we are hoping that we will finally be able to implement uh, the basic income grant so that people can have something which is much more than the 350 in order to survive. Also, Sakina, we're not only just sitting at the 350. We are looking at job opportunities for people. We are knocking on government uh, doors, our own government, in as far as the EPWP or any other form of employment that is possible. We are uh, also expressing this. I was just saying to Sasa the other day, we need to communicate to our own because we've got the platform for communicating to 18 million people so that among those who are still able to board it, people who can be able to get jobs, let us help them to get the jobs because it's better to get a job and get a salary or a pay that is much more than 350 rands. We're doing that. We're looking broadly. We've also been supporting some women, for instance, in Guazulu Natal, who lost their, 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 their informal business because of the unrest. And we've said some of the money that we get, let us not buy food parcels with this money. Let us give to those women who, uh, who are by the street, who lost, who are selling. Let's help them together with the Department of Small Business Development. Let us help them. We've been giving 3,500 to those women. We're looking at how else can we expand this together with the Department of Small Business Development. Because I know, as a matter of fact, that many of our people want to do something for themselves, but the challenge is always the jobs are not there, the money for starting the business is not there. So as a Department of Social Development, we've got the numbers of people who we know. We've got to help them to, to do their businesses, start their businesses, informal business in particular. But those who can do uh, even beyond informal business, why not? It's always about the economy. It's always about money coming into the purse of the house that will always enable people to live a better life.
And, and I'm so glad you touched on the basic income grant, Minister, because as you point out, the last, uh, some time ago when we spoke, I think it was at the opening of Parliament, you did say that it is going to happen. It's an inevitability. And at the point uh, we spoke, you said it was about looking at modalities. As you say, uh, you will now be hearing from someone from Germany about uh, what method they are using. Um, I was reading earlier this week um, Anne Bernstein uh, talking about concerns. So just to clarify, uh, are we still in the phase where you are still listening to uh, uh, arguments for and against the implementation of a basic income grant? Or is it at this point now a fait accompli? It's going to happen. It's just the how. It is a fait accompli. It is now about the how. But of course, Sakina, concerns of people need to be listened to. Because for those who are saying, where are you going to get the money from? Uh, now you're going to be taxing people. The other day when we had the social sector summit, we had um, people who were demonstrating outside of the social sector summit with huge placards where they were saying, tax the rich in order to be able to support those who do want to support themselves, but do not have the means. This is one of the means with which South Africa can do that. We still have to continue listening to people because those who are paying their taxes, sometimes they feel like their tax is being abused. But we've consistently said to people, wouldn't it be better to galvanize and organize and make sure that South Africans who are vulnerable do not go to bed hungry because they do not have the money to even buy the loaf of bread. Wouldn't it be those that are actually paying the taxes? Think about the fact that it would be better if we supported people so that we can lift them up from poverty, lift them from inequality, lift them from abject poverty, lift them from hunger. Wouldn't that be better even for those who are paying the taxes to sleep better and feel comfortable when they know that this money that is being taken for the, from them is also going to good use. It goes to good use when it builds the hospitals, it builds the schools, it builds the roads and does that. But it also goes, it does better when it focuses on the human being, the person who has absolutely nothing because everything that we do, we don't do it for ourselves. We don't build bridges for the sake of bridges or schools for the sake of schools. We build them because human beings have to use them. And therefore, this basic income grant for us as a department, it is now at the level of what is the formula that we are going to use. And we are wanting people to engage with us about what formula they think we can be able to use. And we are also conscious of the purse. It's not to say we're sitting here and thinking that there's just loads of money sitting somewhere. We're saying part of the money that is there, let it also look at the human uh, resource, look at the people of South Africa and give those who are in a worse situation much better. We're even looking at other policies right now, Sakina, if I may. For instance, we're looking now at developing policy on the homeless. I have a document in front of me right now because government has always had this approach that, no, the homeless doesn't, um, we, we at National are not responsible for that. It is local government and all that. My view is that we are one government. And the more we keep seeing people, the number of people growing out there on people who are homeless. And the homeless also need the 350 because they are jobless. But many of them don't have idea, IDs, don't have a place to stay. So the Department of Social Development has now developed a policy that is related to homelessness and what government needs to do to help those people who are homeless. Minister, we are out of time, but I just want to mention, to note to you, uh, quite a few uh, complaints also about the appeal site. Uh, people saying that they're not getting any joy. Uh, the telephones are not being answered. So uh, if they appeal uh, for some reason, it just takes too long. So perhaps just something that you could m maybe just speak to uh, the people responsible for that minister just to attend to people's needs there. Because as you know, people depend on this money. Um, so, but uh, we're going to have to leave it there, minister. 
Thanks so much for your time this Thank morning. You. Uh, Thank social... you, Sakina. Have a good day. Thank Thanks, you Minister. Much. Social Development Minister Lindiwe Zulu there uh, speaking about uh, raising the threshold for the SRD grant uh, from 350 to 624 rand, therefore allowing more people to receive the grant, but also talking about the basic income grant and uh, still at this point looking at the modalities in terms of implementing that. But it is going to happen.